Today, the brand new Evolution Wireless Digital from Sennheiser. So guys, what's the big deal about the digital thing? Actually, I don't, I don't really, did, I don't really know. I know that Sennheiser and wireless goes hand in hand, and they're some of the best wireless systems on the planet. For me, I get to test a wireless system. I'm like, Ugh. it's usually those little, uh, little things with like. Well, I'll show you something like this. This is the Nux system. And it's, you know, it's neat. This actually comes in a little charging thing. It's all, you know, off the grid and, and battery powered. And you plug this in the guitar, you plug the other one in the amp. And they're usually between, if you buy the Harley Benton, it's like, I don't know, 70 bucks, maybe 150. There's also the Line 6 series, the Relay, uh, whereas I use the G10 and I think the G20. And I want to say they're all nice and good if you want to use them on the couch maybe in the practice room, and maybe in a small club, if not too many other people are using wireless systems. When you want a pro application, you're on a big stage, you need reach, and you need to make sure, 100% sure, that your frequency that you're using between this and the receiver, which is not battery powered, that hangs on a wall ward, uh, However, it is 12 volt, 350 milliamps. So I could power that with one of my pedal power supplies, like the Ch uh, Chox DC7, switch that to 12 volt and run it, at the, not the DC7, but the, the four. I can run the four of a USB-C power bank. So if I really wanted to, I can run this off a power bank. Totally doable. Uh, but obviously it's, you know, bigger, bulkier, all that rack mountable and um if you really want to make sure that your vocalist and the guitar player and i don't know the overheads on the drums for reasons nobody understands no that would be very stupid um and the other guitar player and the bass player and the other vocalist if all those frequencies are out of their way this system can help you in a tremendous way because it's app controlled and yes i'm going to show you the app and you teach the app the gear you have and then if you're the front of house guy or even the guy in the band having to set this all up, you go to the venue, uh, turn all these off, turn all these on, hit the sync button, and the app puts them all on the right channels so that they don't interfere with each other and they don't interfere with anything else around. And anything else around, what could that be? Well, in our live test outside, which is coming up a bit later, uh, we had a drone, and that could be something that you're facing at a festival, someone filming the festival from above. Uh, the G10 and the Nux, don't ask me what it was called, that I tested recently, crapped out with the drone. We had a reach in open field of about 15 meters, and then they were gone. Once the drone landed and we turned it off, we had a reach of about 80 meters. Now, how does this do with a powerful drone remote right next to it? We'll find out. Before we find out anything, let's look at the box and the contents. Here we go. So here's the box. Beautiful. Look at those hands. I should be a hand model. Nah, nah. Okay, so, I mean, come on. This is, it's even wrapped like a little, like, you know, like a present. Yeah, okay, cable. You, that's the cable that goes in the thing, but uh, you can actually also use different things, as we will find out. Like the, the the transmitter thing is the same for all systems. I mean, yeah, okay, they include the batteries. They should, at that price point. And then I send out the batteries, and I drop one. You turn it on inside, which is kind of nice. That means you can't accidentally turn it off once the flap's closed. Mute. On off, got a sync button, that's it. No display, because you don't need that. So the cable screws in for absolute security. That's not gonna accidentally come out. Not gonna happen, nah, -uh, no sir. Now, that might be a little detail, but just the, the, the wrapping like, <laughs> like a present in Sennheiser paper, I don't know. It's just an extra kind of neat feature. You know, it, it says, this is high-end shit. 
So on the back, you have XLR, which clearly says use with mics as well, and then the quad inch out and the two antennas and the little input 350 milliamps at 12 volts, which means you can power that with a pedal power supply if you have one that runs at 12 volt and a power bank. So you could run it off the main grid if you had to. Now what this thing is for, I have literally no idea. It doesn't pop up in the manual. I do not know. I'm trying to find out right there and I'm lost. I have no idea what it's for. It's not mentioned. Sennheiser, please write me and tell me what this really nice heavy metal plate is for. The feet are included and I'm popping them on right there. Don't want to scratch up my table. Now I love the BNC connection. I'm a big fan of that. It's on all my video cameras. I use SDI cables and for the cam uh, for the antennas instead of the little you know screw thing this is a quicker way to get a stable connection so that's very nice because you're probably going to have to pop these off when you move it around so make sure you don't lose them but bnc is a good way to connect those antennas here are a bunch of things you don't really need safety blah 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 except for this one thing that you fold out for the manual hidden boxes underneath so i'm looking for the German plugs and there's two of them one a little bit thicker one a little bit thinner which is a very nice detail I've never seen that don't know which ones to use I went with the thicker ones and they work uh, seems to be a little bit more stable connection on to the power supply and one little uh, neat thing on the power supply on top it actually says Sennheiser I have so many power supplies that I do not know where they go which is extremely annoying because you just you just don't. Now I'm testing it, but you don't know where those power supply uh, supplies go because they don't say the actual thing that it, that they go to. So this one says clearly Sennheiser, and I applaud them for that uh, because you know that it belongs to that product. I'm checking out what the rating is. So good. So this is the rack mounting kit. Uh, you can, of course, mount two of them next to each other, but you can mount it by itself. So there's a, there's a distance piece, which is that. Uh, so you first mount the two things on the left and right, and then this distance piece will simply uh, screw into it. Very nice, very high quality. This is solid shit. Uh, Sennheiser doesn't play around there. As I said, they go on the left and right. And then... The distance piece will... What? Huh? Yeah. Hmm? And the distance piece will go into this, I think, like that. And then you can easily rack mount it. Nicely done. I have to say, I really liked the redesigned transmitter. I like that you can power it with normal batteries and you don't need proprietary batteries like on my AVX system because with those are empty, you have to charge them. These, I can put in whatever I want. Um, on off button here, so inside, so you don't accidentally bump it. There's a sync button and a mute and that's it. And I was afraid, I was petrified, that I could only run this with instruments and that this is some kind of instrument specific thing with the instrument cable that is supplied. You get these in kits. You get them with the instrument cable. You can get them with different levels of lav mics. You can get them uh, with the handheld mic for the system and the lav, different kits and different price ranges. The instrument kit is 649 euro as of the filming of this video. And I was afraid that it would only be proprietary to the instrument signal, but no, this is the standard transmitter. However, this is the one in the range R1 to R, R1 to 6. There's a whole bunch of different ones to get out of each other's way. So this is the R1 to 6. And I happen to have a whole bunch of Sennheiser laughs already in my possession. And I tried it and it works. So no, this isn't just for instrument. If you later want to use a laugh with this, all you have to do is buy the mic, screw it in, and off we go. And I'll sh I will show you what that sounds like in the recorder that I'm recording to right now. Right now you're hearing the Sennheiser MKH416P40 uh, shotgun mic, which is phenomenal. That's also the shotgun mic I use in Studio B for everything. That's the shotgun mic I use on my uh, mobile cameras when I'm moving around. It's a good mic. So 
Uh, first, let's look at the display and what you can do on the box itself. Then we look at the app and what the app will do. And then we go outside. And after that, we're gonna run around with this in the house and see how it does through concrete floors. But first, let's look at the actual box. So here's the operation on the actual unit. And you can actually see that there's signal coming in when I talk, because I have the lav mic connected to the transmitter right now. So if you don't want to use the app, which I would recommend, um, you can very easily operate it on the actual unit. You see the strength of the signal right there. You see that Bluetooth is connected. So right now it should be connected to my phone, which is lying over there, over there. Um, this is the signal going out, the AF out. Don't know what AF stands for. Um, but the, uh, this is adjustable. You see the frequency right there, which again changes and you can do an auto scan. You can do all of that here. So what you do is, uh, this is the menu. So nothing really hidden. And you hit set. Then you go through what you want to pick. Let's say gain, you hit set again. And now I adjust the input gain. And it came, I think, set to 27. For guitar, I felt that to be lower than the actual cable. I uh, So I adjusted that for this to kind of have a, a, a healthy level. I adjusted that, I think, to 39. But I would recommend doing some tests with a cable and going back and forth between the transmitter so that you really make sure you're hitting your amp exactly the way that you want. So you can get a healthy input level right there, not too high, and then also adjust the output. So the gain is the input. And if I now let it sit there for a while, it cancels out of it and goes back to the old gain. So don't forget to hit set. Now it's saved. Same thing for the AF out, that's the actual output, either XLR or a quarter inch. Quarter inch is of course what you want when you're working with a guitar or, or a bass. And you adjust the output level, output, 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 output. So, and you set that and you're good. Make sure you're hitting your amp the correct way. Uh, channel is one that is very likely something that the auto thing on the app will set if you have several of these units going. Battery is self-explanatory. It's nice that you have such a big battery indicator because this doesn't have an indicator anywhere. So uh, it, maybe it flashes in a certain way. I don't know. I didn't read the whole manual because this thing is so damn easy. Then you can go to mute lock, which is probably... Let's see, I'm gonna set that. Can I see anywhere here that it's set? It should disable the mute so that you do that by accident. Okay, uh, auto scan is self-explanatory. It will scan the correct frequency. And if it feels it needs to be on a different frequency, it will do that. The channel can be set. Again, if you have several of these units, tune, you actually tune the frequency manually, which is probably something you had to do back in the day, but with this system, you really don't. So I would not fiddle with that. Escape. And you can reset the whole thing. That is all. The sync button is something you'll be prompted by the app to use. So we don't need that right now. So here we are in the app, which is actually rather simple. I just erased everything I had done so we can actually re- experience that together. It's the EWD Smart Assist. It's not a pretty icon and it's not a cool name, but so there's nothing in there right now. Um, and of course, it'll prompt you in the beginning, you know, hello, do you want to do blah, 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 blah. But it says in German, I'm sorry, no uh, receiver added. So I'm going to add a receiver. And now it's telling you, uh, connect with the thing, the thing, the thing, the thing, do the automatic frequency, sync them. Okay, fine. If I want to add several at the same time, uh, hit the sync button on each receiver for three seconds. So you can do that for as many of these as you want, which is what I'm going to do now. Data lights up, it finds it. It already kind of knows that it's called HP42 because I had it done before. 
Okay. Well, we're going to name it again HP42. That's fine. We're going to make it a color. Let's not do purple. Let's do this beautiful turquoise. Save. It wants to uh, do Bluetooth. I say yes. So here's one of the problems with the app. I tried to do this outside. And uh, first of all, all black. Why isn't this white? with black writing would be much easier to see in high sunlight conditions. And also, this is turning. And when you can't really see this down here because of, you know, a lot of sunlight, you're waiting for it. And you're like, why? 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 And I'm like, it doesn't work. And I, I got very, very frustrated. Ease of use is all that this is about. And I know this is not something they could foresee, but this continuously turning. I know it's looking for new devices. I get that now. But... I, ha I redid this process five times and I got very frustrated. I didn't see that you had to click there. So now auto scanning. All, this is weird German. Schalte alle deine Empfänger ein, alle deine Empfänger. Okay, so you turn all your receivers on, but the transmitters off, which we do. Transmitters are off. I only have one. Um, and stay in the vicinity, okay? It's scanning for the correct frequency. Okay. By the way, you also do the firmware update, which I did very easy. It's staying on 520,000 megahertz, which is fine. So now, synchronize. It is on. Hold the sync button. You have to click it, not hold it. Synced. It knows what it is, all that. And we are done. Done. So. It's green. It's telling me that HP 42. You can name this guitar player one. You can this uh, you name this, you know, the Andy, Max, and BB, and whatever. Um, so it's very cool. You can see the battery here. But if I click on it, I can actually see a lot more. I can lock this so that anything I do on it doesn't register, which is very good. Nobody's supposed to freaking touch it. Can deactivate the mute. Can look at the frequency, I can sync, I can auto scan from here to make sure that it's got the right frequency out of the way of everyone. And the most important thing, I can change the input gain. That's a little bit much. Let's say 24. Okay. You can see right here it changed to 24. And also the output gain. So you don't actually have to go this thing, and uh, whoever is holding the app can actually adjust the in and out levels for the whole band. Very, very nicely done. Sennheiser, uh, just please test this thing in high sunlight. Okay, so we're gonna try this. Um, I have my trusty Sennheiser shotgun on the camera just in case. So Leslie will always have the ambient sound, uh, which should be that. And that's really, really loud, but the neighborhood will have to deal with that for a second. And um, uh, you will also hear me if I need to talk somewhere uh, with my AVX system, which is the, can you get my butt, Leslie? That's my AVX. That's the new EWD, which the guitar is connected to right now. Over there, we have a Laboga amp. So zoom in on that next to some dogs. And I have the EWD on that. I just had to fight with it a little bit uh, because I wanted to recalibrate the frequency because when I did my uh, review of the Nux wireless system, which is about a hundred bucks, uh, in which I also had a Line 6 uh, Relay G10, there was a very clear problem while we were flying the drone, which my brother is manning over there. So we got a Mavic 2 on the ground, so we can get some nice aerial shots. But the drone was a problem and highly reduced the range of the system to about 15 to 20 meters. Without the drone, we had about 80. Now I'm hoping that the Sennheiser system, which clocks in at a lot more, is a lot better. And for that, I wanted to recalibrate the system. I took out the, my phone, I took out the app and said, auto scan, rescan. So with the, drone on, I'm hoping that it kind of now found those frequencies and got around them. We will find out. Um, and then I had no connection anymore. And then I've just fought with it for a little bit uh, because out in these really, really, really bright conditions, the app is black. 
and you literally cannot see anything. And I didn't see the little continue thing at the bottom. So Sennheiser, please do an auto sensing app. Everyone's got it now. It's the hard thing to do. So when you're out in the bright conditions, make the freaking app white with black writing. When you're inside, make it, hmm, I don't know, white with black writing is probably not a bad idea. Why does it have a black background? I couldn't see anything. So we are now going up and down the street, up and down the street, playing this trusty gray thing with the X, with the EWD something, the thing we were testing. And as always, what I do is I ride on the mono wheel because it's fun. And I would say off we go. It's really warm. And there's a lot of Sennheiser going on in my pants right now. But I guess that, that's how it is. Doing this with a guitar is difficult, but for you, I will do it. Thank you, Leslie, for manning the camera, as always. So this is gonna be loud and the neighbors will have to deal with it. I mean, we can roll back the volume. Let's see how it, how it deals with it. <laughs> Neighborhood jazz. But, uh, those poor dogs, they can go away if it's too loud. It's not my fault. You ready? Let's see. Oh, oh, oh. Certainly, extremely more reach with the drone than any of the extremely cheap systems. And I didn't fault the Nux or the Line 6 for being, you know, susceptible to drone interference. That's loud. Um, but because you, 100 euro system, you play on the couch, you play in the practice room, maybe the small, the small club. A Sennheiser EWD, you're gonna play at a freaking festival. And when you play at a freaking festival, then there's gonna be freaking drones people like my brother um, trying to get festival footage. So it has to work with the frequencies, especially of a Mavic 2, which is the standard in dronage. And um, 
I think it performed, I mean, I drove away so far that I couldn't hear the amp anymore. And I think I couldn't hear it because I was too far away rather than it cutting out. I was quite far away um, with the drone, whereas the cheap systems crept out after about 15 meters in an open field. This isn't an open field, as you can see, there are houses. So I think uh, the system performs admirably. The app guides you through everything, but oh my God, do I wish I could read it when the sun shines, like today. Now we're gonna pack everything up and go inside and do more tests in there. After a rather successful instrument test on the street, I think it was pretty good with the drone. Other uh, much cheaper systems had a very, very low range. And uh, this has a range that is far above that what you would need on any festival stage anywhere. I mean, ri ridiculously bigger. Okay, so we're gonna do the test with the laugh mic. You're also gonna hear the quality. This is the cheapest one, actually. The, um, I don't know the words. Um, and we're gonna run around the house. We have thick concrete floors. This part of the house is an old house, uh, an old barn, and usually uh, Wi-Fi does not do well in those. So we're gonna see how this megahertzy thing does. I don't know terms. What's it gonna go in the yard? And I'm recording, let me show you this, right here, this. XLR. Going into this recorder right there. So we're recording directly onto this recorder. Good. And off we go. So let's first try the backyard and see if they're still level. I can't tell. I have no idea. Uh, I'm just running. Let's see. We go out in the backyard and I don't know what's happening. I just have to keep on talking about stuff so that we see if the signal drops out or not. I have no idea. We are now in my backyard. And if I was this far away from where I would have to be, this would already be like a major, majorly mega big stage, I would assume. I'm away 30 meters, I think. There's my house. And down in the floor is the receiver behind a very thick wall. Now we're gonna go through the house into the living room. I did this test yesterday. There was a tiny bit at one point, a tiny bit of crackleish kind of breakup. But on what stage do you have concrete walls? Um, are you, do you use this in a studio? I mean, would you use it in a studio through walls? I don't know, probably not. But, well, I mean, it's up to you. Usually we're talking on a stage. So here I'm going through the switching room back there. That's usually where Leslie sits. You're gonna hear a vacuum cleaner downstairs. You're gonna hear that. That's Justina vacuuming. There's a lot of green right here. Okay, and we're going, we're going into the living room. Look at all the guitars. We it's not about guitars, that's about how to get them wirelessly into your amp. Okay, so I'm in the living room. We're right above the studio, and there's a huge thick concrete ceiling, which means we should have, I mean, according to what I'm thinking, we should have no signal. But when Raphael is singing up here, I'm using the Sennheiser in-ear, which, which I have some here somewhere, the G4 in-ear, which is not digital, um, but it performs flawlessly. It's sitting right there. That's for up here, right there, there's the pack. And there's the transmitter in this case, it's, it's the reversed. Um, and that's actually performing rather nicely. So I know from experience that the Sennheiser stuff can be transmitted within this house. Uh, we're gonna see how the new why a digital thing does. Once I look at the data on the recorder, once we're back. And uh, here for some of you pedal nerds, all the pedals that I have left in three big racks. I banned them from the studio because I uh, just had no space for them anymore. And um, yeah, this is a complete chaos room right here. With lots of boxes. You know, stuff that needs to be stored. This house is not clean. I mean, it's clean, but it's not, it's not in order. 
because I usually am in the studio and that's all that I am in. Very focused on the video. So we're coming back here. And that's what I see. And back to that thing. I don't know what you heard. I don't know if there was any dropouts, any crackle. I haven't uh, actually experienced yesterday when I did the test of serious dropouts, but we're gonna see. So, for the My Two Cents, let's stick with the laugh mic because why not? Um, it's not the same quality as the beautiful shotgun, uh, but different applications, very clearly. I'm not gonna run around with a shotgun. I have to say that the range test outside was very enlightening. And the fact that the drone was flying blew my mind because in other tests, I'm gonna say this for the third time now, with the drone, much cheaper systems completely crapped out. This is not a cheap system. Uh, with the instrument set, the instrument set is 649. So no, this is not for you to play a little bit on the couch. Likely not. It's definitely more of a pro application, probably for the bigger gigs on bigger stages inside, for the much bigger gigs on festival stages where you're quite far away from your amp, where literally a six meter cable wouldn't do. And I think it performs beautifully there. I think even when people are flying a drone, if you run the app for all your systems, for the vocalist, for everyone, and say auto scan, make sure everything's out of the way, I think you're pretty safe. It was very clear that inside here, it wants 520,000 megahertz, uh, whereas outside, as soon as the drone was flying, it wanted uh, five something, five, 60, it, it definitely picked a different frequency, so it did its job. It also got out of the way of the AVX, which is also a digital system. So, ease of use, absolutely. Uh, the app bugged me a bit, I was really getting frustrated, but that was because I didn't see the continue thing at the bottom in bright lighting conditions. Could be my fault, yes I could be stupid, but I'm just pointing that out. I am very excited that the same transmitter can be used for the laugh, because that means I will park the receiver and the transmitter in the studio. I will have this here in a drawer, and if I need to do anything running around, I would rather use this than the um, XSW. Even though the XSW from Sennheiser is a good system, and I have a few of them, and that's an understatement, um, they always have to be charged. And when I take them out of the bag, I don't really know which one is charged and how much. This, I'll just plug in, or actually plug into a pedal power if I wanted to with 12 volt. Easily, I've got tons of them sitting around. I can literally put this on the table without the power supply, uh, plug it into my Chox 12 volt, bam, the Chox has uh, 330 out, so 350 out, 12, no, actually no. It's got about 400 on 12 volt, so it should be totally fine. And um, I'm not dependent on charging the system. I can put in batteries in the in the pack and I'm done. So running around here, this is gonna make my videos a little bit more dependable and easier. Uh, it's clearly a better system than the tiny little battery powered ones. No offense to the Sennheiser XSW, which is great and very affordable. Um, I'd rather use a pro system like this. And when it comes to guitar, there's no doubt that this has better reach, and I feel less latency. I feel more clarity, and the fact that you can actually, which you can't do on the little systems, uh, do the input and output gain, means I can absolutely adjust it perfectly to match my cable sound, or actually my cable level, let's put it that way. So yeah, uh, cable level, I plugged it back and forth, I'm like, oh, blah, blah, blah. okay, that, those are the input and output levels that I want, and it sounded through the amp, exactly like my cable. I think Sennheiser did a great job. And I'm not saying that because they're paying for this video, which they are, because these videos aren't free. This is a shit ton of work. And where else would they find a nut so to ride around on a mono wheel? Mono wheel costs money, people. Come on. No, I love Sennheiser. I love the people. I love the products. I use a lot of them for like studio miking drums and whatever. You know, I, uh, I bet on Lewitt. But for any kind of utility stuff, shotguns, wireless, 
Uh, actually, yeah, the, the only wireless stuff I use is Sennheiser, and I've got, I've got a bunch of them. And di for different applications, I grab either the ABX or I have my G4 video system that they sent me. Thank you, Sennheiser. Um, I have a whole bunch of XSWs, which do a great job for certain applications. And now the EWD, the Evolution Wireless Digital, will absolutely be used in here. Thank you, by the way, for leaving the in-ear, the G4 in-ear with me, because I just did a full week of drum recording with Felix Lehrmann, most German, Germany's most booked studio drummer. We did a whole bunch of amazing lessons that you can get soon. And how was he going to get the signal upstairs in the living room? Well, he's got his in-ears. I gave him the pack. Done absolutely pro-level shit. And there was never a single issue with it. So if you want issue-free operation, Put it there, you have a whole bunch of them in the rack. Oh, the, uh, the, the rack thing's totally fine, included for some companies, you have to pay extra for those. Great job, Sennheiser. It works. Video done, animals at the end.